Live streaming can be easy or complicated. It all depends on the scale of your production, the size of your team, and the equipment you have available. So what do you need to achieve your live streaming goals? Watch this video and decide for yourself. In this video, we'll talk about what live streaming is, how it works, what equipment you need, and the different streaming platforms you can use. Chris here from VideoMaker. There are time codes below if you want to know what we're covering or want to jump to any place in the video. Are you a beginning filmmaker? If so, we have a shopping list of the nine essential things every beginning filmmaker needs when getting started. To get it, click on this card or click on the link in the description. Live streaming is the process of taking a video or an audio signal from a capture device, such as a camera, and broadcasting it over the internet in real time. Like a television broadcast, the audience sees the action as it happens, with minimal delay. However, live streaming over the internet has numerous additional benefits compared to its TV counterpart. Chief among those is the ability to interact directly with the viewers during the broadcast. This provides a uniquely engaging viewing experience for your audience. Now that you have a better idea of what live streaming is, let's dig into how it works. We know that live streaming allows us to capture video and send it live to an audience around the world. But how does that work? Technically, any video you watch online is a streamed video. The video's file is stored remotely. Then, when you watch the video in your web browser, the server storing the file sends you chunks of that data at a steady rate as the video progresses. This saves you from having to download the video before watching it. It's also why you sometimes have to wait for a video to buffer when you have a slow internet connection. The video player is storing up more video data so that it can play back the next section smoothly. With live streaming, instead of transmitting data from a file on a server, you are transmitting data as it's captured. To accomplish this, we rely on a combination of different technologies. Let's look at a simple example. The streaming process starts with your camera. The video's camera feed goes to an encoding device, which can be either a hardware encoder or a software encoder installed on your computer. The streaming encoder uses a streaming protocol to encode the stream and send it to your chosen streaming platform. The protocol dictates how the incoming audio and video streams will be encoded and transmitted. There are a variety of protocols in use today, and each different protocol offers its own benefits. The one you use will partially depend on your streaming setup and destination platform. The most common protocol is RTMP, which stands for Real-Time Messaging Protocol. Other common protocols include RTSP, WebRTC, SRT, HLS, and CMAF, but there are many others. Once your video's feed is encoded, it's transmitted to the streaming platform, which distributes your stream to viewers around the world. Now you know what live streaming is and how it works, but before you can start your own live stream, you'll need the right tools. Let's make sure you have what you need to start live streaming. Your live stream starts with your camera. The simplest choice is your phone. It's an all-in-one solution. However, if you want to produce a more complex stream with higher production value, you'll need something else. The next easiest camera option is a webcam. If one isn't already built in, a USB webcam can connect directly to your computer. Plus, they're usually automatically detected by most stream encoding software. The image quality is getting better, but webcams generally don't perform well in low light or other challenging conditions. Up next, we have a dedicated video camera. These include point and shoot vlogging cameras, mirrorless cameras, DSLRs, and camcorders. Many modern cameras can connect to your computer via USB. However, to get the best video quality, you'll want to connect your camera via HDMI. For this option, you'll need to invest in an internal or external capture card for your computer or purchase a hardware streaming encoder with HDMI ports. Also in the dedicated camera category, we have pan, tilt, zoom cameras. PTZ cameras are designed to be arranged around a studio and then controlled from a central location. They get their name from the fact that they can be panned, tilted, and zoomed according to the needs of the production. Your audio quality is just as important as your video quality. Don't rely on your camera's built-in microphone. There are many affordable options when it comes to microphones and the increased audio quality will be well worth the investment. Once you have a microphone, you'll need a way to input that signal into your streaming encoder or hardware. Choosing a USB mic makes it easy to connect to a computer, but you can also opt for a microphone with an XLR connection. You'll just need to pair it with a USB mixer or an audio capture card. 
Next up, the streaming encoder. As we talked about earlier, the streaming encoder takes the feed from your camera, encodes it according to a streaming protocol, and then sends that stream to your chosen platform. It's a critical piece of tech in any streaming setup. There are both hardware and software streaming encoders available. Live stream encoding software usually includes handy streaming tools like camera switching, audio mixing, and overlay effects. However, you'll need a powerful computer to run it especially as you add more cameras or increase resolution. Hardware encoders can take the form of full multimedia production systems with companion streaming software, like the NewTek TriCaster Mini 4K, or they can serve to simply encode your stream and send it directly to your destination. The streaming encoder you use will depend on the needs of your production and your budget. If you're just starting, try an affordable, often free, software encoder. Once you've learned more about streaming, you'll have a better idea of what you specifically need then you can invest in a more advanced streaming setup. If you plan to switch between more than one audio or video input during your stream, you'll need a switcher. Like streaming encoders, switchers come in both software and hardware versions. Software options are generally more affordable and take up less desk space. The downside is that they're harder to use, especially if you're trying to present the stream and switch at the same time. On the other hand, hardware switchers offer more complex control and make it easier to manage complex multimedia streams. If you'd like a more tactile experience or want to feel like a professional tech director, a hardware switcher is the way to go. Before you can start streaming, you'll need to have a reliable internet connection. A steady connection means a constant stream for your viewers. It's always best to use a hardwired internet connection for live streaming. The next factor to consider is your internet speed. Here, upload speeds will be more important than download speeds. It's difficult to pin down a specific minimum internet speed need to live stream. It will largely depend on your stream's bitrate. This tells us how much data needs to be spent per second to maintain a smooth stream. Generally, upload speeds between three and eight megabits per second are significant to support most HD streams. You'll likely need a faster connection for higher resolutions and frame rates. While you could host a live stream directly from your computer or a private server, it's much more common to send your stream to a streaming platform. That way, the burden of distributing the stream falls on a powerful streaming service rather than your network. Commonly used streaming platforms include YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Instagram, and TikTok. Audiences on each platform will have different expectations and tastes when it comes to live video content. Which platform you choose will depend on your specific stream, your target viewers, and the content you want to present. When thinking about where to stream, look to the platform that best aligns with your goals for your stream overall. If you already have a huge Facebook following, don't expect them to tune in on your YouTube stream, and vice versa. Likewise, a gaming stream might not perform as well on Instagram as it would on Twitch. Do your research about each platform's strengths and weaknesses, decide whether which one best fits your specific project. Finally, if you want more control over where and how your stream is presented, you can use a paid stream hosting service. By now, you should know what live streaming is, how it works, and what you need to get started. It's time to apply that knowledge and start your first stream. Remember, if you'd like to get our shopping list of the nine essential things every beginning filmmaker needs, click on this card here or the link in the description. If you made it this far, consider subscribing and liking this video. In the next video, we'll cover how to produce a remote multi-cam live stream. Thanks for watching.